tonight. Attorneys for the man accused of murdering a Trinity University student suggesting drugs may have played a role in her death. Debate over the effectiveness of legislation meant to curb gun violence and the San Antonio airport losing two nonstop flights as a result of the grounding of the Boeing 737 MAX. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 tonight. I'm Myra Arthur. Some lawmakers calling it a success, while others say there was a lot of work that still needs to be done. Texas Congressman Henry Cuellar says that a recent report on the Fix Nix Act that was passed last year shows the number of guns bought by people who aren't qualified to buy them is on the decline. Fix Nix refers to the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. It's a database designed to help determine whether someone is qualified to buy a gun. Tiffany Huertas helps us understand what this legislation is meant to do. A recent report from the Department of Justice shows more than 6 million new records have been added to the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, or Nix since the Fix Nix Act was passed last year. This means more government agencies are adding criminal records or other instances that prevent someone from buying or owning a gun. Congress passed the Fix Nix Act in March 2018. It was a bipartisan bill pushed by two Texas congressmen following the Sutherland Springs church shooting. 26 people died, including children. Senator John Cornyn and Representative Henry Cuellar said they knew something had to be done after the Air Force failed to submit information about the gunman's conviction that would have prevented him from buying a gun. The Air Force didn't do its job. They did not turn in on several occasions information that should have been uh, part of the, uh, the National Instant uh, uh, Background Check. So therefore, he was able to buy a gun when he should have not been able to do this. The Air Force eventually made changes to its criminal history reporting requirements. In a statement, Senator Cornyn said, quote, I commend the Department of Justice for working to fully implement this law, and I look forward to seeing the continued progress Fix Nix can make to ensure missing records don't put more innocent lives at risk. End quote. The Fix Nix Act strengthens the database. It requires federal agencies and states to submit four year plans focused on uploading all information to the background check system, holds federal agencies accountable if they fail to upload records, and it also rewards states that come up with a plan. But not everyone believes this is enough. Communications Director for the Texas Democratic Party, Obi Rahman, sent us a statement saying, in part, quote, 2019 is on pace to be the most violent year in United States and Texas history. We've had three more mass shootings in Texas since the passage of this bill. It's clear that this bill and Cornyn's Response Act do not go far enough to solve the issues of gun violence, end quote. There are some other key findings in the report. The military continues to increase its record entry into NICS. All 50 states, including the District of Columbia, are in compliance. Only one federal agency, the U.S. Capitol Police, didn't submit any semi-annual semi certifications, but the agency says it is reviewing records that it could provide. Myra. All right, thanks, Tiffany. Could a drug have played a role in the 2017 death of a Trinity University student? It's an idea that attorneys for the man accused of beating Kaylee Mandotti to death explored in court today. Mandotti's cause of death was determined to be blunt force trauma to the head. An autopsy revealed she suffered a skull fracture and brain bleeding. Mark Howerton, the man on trial, claims Mandotti stopped breathing after the couple had sex. Today, the defense called a witness who studies the effects of psychoactive drugs. Toxicology reports show Mandotti was high on the drug MDMA, or Molly, when she died. He testified that side effects of MDMA use include hypertension, which can contribute to brain bleeding. In fact, people have died from hemorrhage from MDMA from much lower concentrations than this. Prosecutors raise the point that most people who take MDMA don't die, a point that the defense's witness did agree with today. Did you know that more than a million fake bills are passed around the San Antonio area every single year? It's one of the reasons the U.S. Secret Service launched Operation Quick Glance. Agents want to remind retailers and you to take a good look at the cash you're receiving. Businesses big and small alike can become targets. They usually they hit you when you're busy. 
you know, that's when you don't have time to check things really good. And that's when they really get you. So how can you spot a fake? Agents say look for foreign writing on both sides of the bill. Pay attention to words like for motion picture use only or replica. If you come across a phony bill, call police or the Secret Service office. Tonight on the Nightbeat, we'll tell you how one business is using technology to combat this problem of fake bills. Multiple people dead in a shootout lasting hours in a New Jersey neighborhood today, including a police officer. The search is on for a plane that disappeared from radar and a store manager is seen on camera catching a falling baby. Here's tonight's nine at nine. Six people killed after a gunman attacks visitors in the waiting room of a Czech hospital. Three other people were hurt. The suspect later died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. No motive has been named. Here at home, a San Antonio man arrested in a murder for hire plot involving his ex-girlfriend. Teodoro Torres III arrested last night on suspicion of solicitation of capital murder. Investigators say he paid $10,000 to a man he met in jail asking him to kill his ex-girlfriend. When the man he paid got cold feet, investigators say he told the woman about the plan. Six people, including one police officer, killed in a shootout in New Jersey today. Investigators believe two suspects were also killed. Police say the situation started as a drug deal in a cemetery. All we heard was a heel of gunfire. They turned around, they had the police detectives, the unmarked cars pulled up. They were shooting at them, blew the tires out. We're learning more about a San Antonio airman who died while in confinement at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. Airman Basic Robert D. Bryce was found unresponsive in his cell on December 5th. He was sentenced to eight years in confinement for a 2017 conviction of sexual assault of a child and possession of child pornography. The cause or manner of his death has not been released. Search efforts intensifying for an Antarctica-bound Chilean Air Force plane that disappeared an hour after takeoff. Argentina, Uruguay, the U.S. and Brazil all taking part in the search. A lawsuit wants California universities to stop using SAT and ACT scores in the admissions process. It claims standardized tests are discriminatory to people with disabilities, low-income students, and minorities. The University of California says it's disappointed by the lawsuit since its officials are already making efforts to address the concern. In Utah, a quick-acting store manager saves a baby from falling. The baby was perched on a glass countertop at a pawn shop while two women were shopping for a gun. That's when the manager saw the baby start to fall. Luckily, the child was not hurt. The first fully electric seaplane takes off on a successful voyage in British Columbia. The flight of the Harbor Air Float plane lasted just three minutes, but it was a big accomplishment for future electric aircraft. The test flight was the first step in the process to get the e-plane certified for commercial use. A Belgian child prodigy has dropped out of college in the Netherlands and is headed to study here in the U.S. The nine-year-old was studying electrical engineering. We don't know where he plans to complete his degree. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. When it comes to business, it is not usually brief. So here to break down what's been happening around San Antonio, Greg Jefferson, business editor and columnist with the San Antonio Express News. Thank you. I guess it could be brief. <laughs> I'm just not brief. But anyway, you're going to help us make it. <laughs> yeah, brief. yeah, okay, yeah. All right. So let's talk, first talk about two direct flights leaving the San Antonio airport because oh, yeah, yeah. of the whole grounding of the the Boeing 737 Max. Right. So yeah, some some background. Of course, we had two. Uh, two crashes of a Boeing 737 Maxes last year and early this year, which led to the grounding of the entire fleet. Uh, the impact that's had on San Antonio International is that you've got uh, Southwest and American Airlines having to scale back some of their flights just because they don't have the planes available with the 737 Maxes out of play. Southwest has cut its route to uh, Oakland. Mm -hmm. An American has uh, cut its route to Philadelphia. They had cut those two uh, earlier in the fall, but they resumed uh, in November. They kind of worked things around, different uh, flight schedules, so that they could accommodate them. 
Uh, it's getting tough again, especially with the holiday oh, yeah, travel sure. season. So uh, they're moving like the non-max uh, aircraft out of San Antonio into kind of higher, you know, more profitable markets. Um, and they, they think that they'll be able to resume the flights, I believe it's in March, but that's if the FAA clears the fleet of, of, of right. maxes and nobody knows for sure if that's gonna happen. Yeah, that's the big hurdle that, that right. this whole fleet is facing right yeah. now. So how big of a, a blow, or really is it, to the San Antonio airport to lose these two direct flights? I mean, this, because we so, have so few of them. Well, yeah, that's the problem. I mean, San Antonio International is struggling with the number of direct flights it has now. Every direct flight it loses, it's another step backward. And uh, probably especially galling was um, this morning, American Airlines announced new direct flights from Austin Bergstrom to San Jose and, and another city, uh, just as they're peeling back, you know, that, that route in San Antonio. So, I mean, it is, uh, it's hurting, you know, the, the the city the city's airports competition with other regional, you know, other regional facilities. Okay, so these two direct flights on American, the mm -hmm. direct from San Antonio to Philadelphia on Southwest, the direct to Oakland. Right. They're supposed to resume April March time. Yeah, frame, but it's we all wait yeah exactly. It's all contingent on uh, the uh, 737 Maxes getting back up in the air, and we just don't know if that's going to happen in that time frame. Welcome back to the News at 9. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. I hope you've enjoyed your day. It was definitely different than the last couple of days, all because of a cold front. Take a look at the time lapse right before the sunset. We saw a little bit of clearing in the clouds and the high today was 64, but that comes with the catch. That high temperature was right at midnight because of the front that moved through. We actually spent most of the day in the 40s and take a look at the rainfall total today. We actually saw some rain a little bit less than two tenths of an inch and that low of 40. Uh, was kind of like the base temperature that we spent most of the day at. Very cold and a lot colder than 24 hours ago by about 20 degrees or so. So I just showed you that the clouds are clearing out. That's the perfect recipe for temperatures to cool down overnight. And this is a look at tomorrow morning's uh, forecast temperatures. You can see that some places will be waking up right near a freeze. That includes Hondo, places out west toward Uvalde, and especially up in the higher elevations and a little bit more north of San Antonio. So in the hill country, you could expect to see a light freeze. Let's take you in a little bit closer so that you can see areas around downtown. Uh, so again, if you live in Leon Springs or near Holotus, even up toward Timberwood Park and out toward Bernie, you're going to have to be aware that there is going to be a light freeze. And so that would mean taking in any sensitive vegetation. I myself have a little basil plant outside. I'm going to be taking it in, even though I live closer to downtown. You see, we're going to be flirting with that freezing line. So I'm just going to play safe. Now tomorrow we'll have plenty of sunshine so that allow temperatures to warm back up into the mid to upper 50s. As for rainfall today, you know, it wasn't a goalie washer. We did see some areas with some light rain, about a quarter of an inch of rainfall uh, for many places like at Randolph Air Force Base and out towards Seguin. And, and again, this isn't going to put much of a dent in the drought. This is a look at the current drought monitor around Bear County. And you can see that most of us are experiencing a moderate drought at the moment. You go up up toward Bernie, out toward Bandera, out toward Medina Lake. Uh, that's a severe drought. So we really need a good 
good rain system. Unfortunately, we're just not going to make it uh, to, there, to there over the next seven days. What we are going to do is hop on that temperature roller coaster. So yesterday we were at 78. Today uh, in the afternoon, our highs were only in the upper 40s. And then over the next several days, we're going to slowly see that temperature rise. By the weekend, we'll be back into the upper 70s. And before we can get too hot, another cold front will dip us back down into the 50s for those afternoon temperatures. So hold on. It's going to be a roller coaster ride of excitement. But tomorrow, uh, a fairly quiet day. We're going to have plenty of sunshine, temperatures climbing up to near 59 degrees, north winds at 3 to 10 miles per hour. Let's take you through to seven day. Again, you can see just how much we warm up on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we will be in the upper 70s, and then that front will move through on Monday, make things nice and chilly, feeling a little bit more like Christmas time. Let's touch on another big business issue. Mm -hmm. Very, very local for us here. Via right. funding versus oh, yeah. funding to protect the Edwards Aquifer. That's mm -hmm. not a matchup I think a lot of no, people saw coming. It is not. No, it's funny. Uh, so what's happened is uh, over the last few years, uh, there's been a really laser-like focus on uh, San Antonio's transit system. and. You have to look at our transit system for about five seconds before you realize how underfunded VIA is. I mean, bus service here, uh, you know, it's, it needs to be, uh, you know, higher frequency and more reliable. Everybody kind of acknowledges that. And it's got to have some kind of advanced rapid transit component. What that is, nobody's really saying, nobody really knows at this point. Uh, and with its funding now, uh, through the sales tax, it's just not enough. Uh, it needs more money. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf, Mayor uh, Ron Nuremberg, they're in agreement that they, they, they're looking at funding options available to them. They agree that the, the 1 8 cent sales tax that's funding the uh, aquifer uh, protection acquisitions, you know, buying these conservation e easements over the aquifer to stop development, uh, that money is the most uh, readily available. So they want to pull funding from aquifer protection to fund uh, via. You know, this would be an additional about $40 million a year. It's quite a bit of money. That's significant. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, there is um, the problem of aquifer protection. Of course. What do we do? With, <laughs> right, I yeah. Mean, we have, gotta have drinking water. That's right. So, so it's, you know, we're, we're in a situation where, you know, our elected officials, uh, they know they want this money for via. But they also know they want to continue uh, these these land purchases over uh, the aquifer just to, to stop development so you don't have the risk of contaminating our drink, drinking water. Uh, so where do you go to for the money? So as, uh, the San Antonio water system actually had uh, a program like what we've seen with the sales tax, these these aquifer or you know, these uh, conservation easements over the aquifer. They made their first purchase in 1993 and their last one, this was SARS, the last one in uh, 2007. It was really small scale compared to what the city's been able to do with the sales tax fund. The question now is, uh, if SAW's board agrees to do this, and from their meeting today, it looks like they're, they're seriously entertaining the idea, uh, how much are they willing to spend and how much are ratepayers going to be paying? I mean, it's. I think it's almost inevitable that if SAWS begins buying these, these easements again, it's going to have to uh, it's going to have to be on the backs of ratepayers. There will and be another rate increase. This is on top of exactly. Vista Ridge. This is on top of I mean rate increases that we see yeah, I mean, all the time. We've got a 10% rate increase coming in 2020, so that's about to kick in in less than a month. SAWS is already under uh, a consent decree to spend 500 million to improve the sewer system. Like all of these have really driven up uh, rates for SAWS customers. And now you're throwing this on top of that. I mean. So when do we know when SAWS could possibly say, yes, we're in, and here's how much it, we're willing to It'll have to be pretty to soon because uh, they, will, uh, they will start this program in 2021 because the, I think uh, the, the sales tax will kick in, or it'll be in effect through 2020. So you're talking about in about a year. In yeah. a year. Yeah. Okay. See what happens. Yeah, and we'll, yeah, good luck with your water bill. So. <laughs>
During the holiday season, a lot of people put their money toward great causes and give to the charity or charities of their choice. But if you don't do your research, the money you think is going to help people might be falling into the wrong hands. Digital journalist Ivan Herrera with some tips on how to donate to charities wisely and avoid scams. It's in this week's Money It's Personal. The holidays are a great time to give back to a cause you support, but do you know where your money is going? The Federal Trade Commission has some tips to help you ensure your donation to charity is going to help others. First, do some online research. If you don't already have a charity to support, search for a cause you care about, such as homeless children or hurricane relief. Pair your search term with phrases like best charity or highly rated charity. Once you have found one you'd like to donate to, look for the charity's ratings and see if it has any complaints or if it has been part of any scams. Next, think about how you'll be making your donation. The FTC says if you want to be on the safe side, pay the charity with a credit card or check. And it's a good practice to keep a record of all the donations you've made. Before you click on a link to donate online, make sure you know who's receiving your donation. Lastly, keep scammer tricks in mind when you're thinking of donating to a cause. Don't let anyone rush you into making a donation. And remember that scammers can spoof caller ID to make it look like they're calling from a local number. If you need to report a scam, head to ftc.gov forward slash complaint. For The Nine, Ivan Herrera. For more tips on how to avoid charity scams, head to our website, ksat.com slash news at nine. And if you have any money questions that you would like us to answer, you could ask those questions right there at the bottom of that article. Money, it's personal, just one of the series that we feature here on the news at nine. Here's a look at the lineup of some of the others we have. Tune in on Thursday for an all new throwback Thursday. Let's turn to some of tonight's top stories. House Democrats unveiled two articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump today. The charges are abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. In the formal articles, Democrats accuse the president of endangering national security by asking Ukraine to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden while withholding U.S. military aid as leverage. The president maintains he has done nothing wrong and is calling this a witch hunt. Voting on the articles in the House Judiciary Committee is expected to happen within days. A vote in the full House is expected to take place by Christmas. Bill Cosby has lost his appeal to overturn his sexual assault conviction. Cosby's trial was based on the account of Andrea Constant, who Cosby drugged and assaulted at his home in January 2004. The disgraced comedian said additional accusers shouldn't have been allowed to testify. Cosby was convicted in April 2018 on three counts of aggravated indecent assault against Constant. He's serving a three to ten year sentence. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. I'm Julie Otto with Broadway Bank. I'd like to send a holiday greeting to all the men and women of our armed forces. I'd like to spend, send a special greeting to my niece, Gunnery Sergeant Shana Hamilton with the U.S. Marine Corps. Merry Christmas, Shana. Right, another business issue that's everyone's business this mm -hmm. time of year, holiday shopping. When it came to Black Friday, mm -hmm. online shopping ruled yeah. that day. Oh yeah, and this was this was this was a history breaking Black Friday. This was the first time where you actually saw more purchases made online than in person. People spent on Black Friday about seven point four billion dollars in the store, but they spent nine point four billion on Amazon, I'm gonna guess a lot of it was on Amazon, but you know, I'm, I'm told there are other uh, other <laughs> venues you can buy stuff online for. Who knew? But yeah, who knew, who knew, I don't know. <laughs> I've never used them, but yeah, I hear they exist. Uh, and that's that's remarkable. I mean, both, uh, both represented a pretty strong increase over the previous year. So, I mean, both increased about 19%. Uh, that's remarkable. I mean, it, it signals that we've got a good, healthy economy. You know, how much longer that's going to last, who knows? But we were saying the same thing last year. I mean, we were expecting the bottom to fall out. So, um, you know, it was, you know, there's no reason to think that that's not going to widen even more in the years to come. I mean, we're just, 
that we are a society now that's just accustomed to buying things online. We've mostly, you know, except for, you know, the 200 year olds among us, we're just kind of used to buying, you know, giving up our information online, you know. Yeah, saving. it doesn't surprise me that online shopping yeah. will overtake I mean, and order sales. I mean, as I thought about it, it's like, I'm kind of surprised it didn't happen last year right. or the year before. That was my reaction when yeah. hearing these numbers. It didn't happen last year? Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the the downside is uh, kind of the, the human aspect of it. I mean, if, if, you're one of the, if you're one of these people, and I'm not one of them, but if you're one of them, who actually enjoys going out on a Black Friday, enjoying the crowds and all of that. God bless you. You <laughs> probably need, it. yeah, you need some help. <laughs> but, but if you enjoy that, I mean, you know, the, the traffic was way down. I mean, we sent yeah. a couple of reporters out for Black Friday just to check the scene out. And they came back reporting that, you know, there was just not much going it was on. normal shopping. Yeah, and just we early. actually found that, uh, you know, across the country, foot traffic was down about 6% on uh, Black Friday, although on uh, Thanksgiving Day, shopping there was up nearly 3%. My three daughters, uh, they bolted from Thanksgiving dinner to go to Target at six <laughs> on Thanksgiving Day, so. Hey, I you don't know, know what, for the know. people who that is their tradition, <laughs> yeah. smaller crowds could mean good things for Oh yeah, you. totally, totally, yeah. yeah. All we'll right, see. thanks for being here, Greg. Oh, no problem, thank you. What's trending on our website tonight? Let's go to ksat.com with RJ Marquez and find out. All right, Myra, got a lot of uh, interesting stories, nice mix of stuff here on our website. And uh, we start with one of my personal favorites, uh, Justin's unique Texas town name. I series. do love these stories. Yes. It always gives you an insight <laughs> to how these towns got their names. Yeah, and uh, today's uh, edition of this is a town that I'd never even heard of, Divot, Texas. Divot, Texas. Yes. Gotta say, heard? I'm not familiar no. with that okay. either. So Divot, Texas, it is uh, west of, uh, let me see here, it is west of Pearsall and Dilly, kind of in between them. Okay. And um, as Justin has been known to do, he does a great job breaking down how they got the name. It was originally called Pivot. Uh, okay. Yes, because there was a pivot sort of in the road, I guess, uh, where this town was founded. But a clerical error uh, made the name become Divot. They apparently made a mistake on the typewriter. That's they went from hilarious. P to D. And it's kind of funny because he uh, talked to a uh, historian at the Whitty Museum who really kind of said that a lot of names were like that, where there were just this like one letter was off and a lot of these like names sort of ended up being different than what and they were. And they stuck. Were. And they the stuck, human yeah. error stuck. The divot stuck, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's so great. Yeah. I, I, you got to go check these stories out. Absolutely. They're always fascinating. Yeah, uh, we have that story on our website, ksat.com. All right, switching gears here. Uh, this is a pretty horrifying story, if you ask me. This okay. is some like stuff straight out of like Stranger Things or something. I don't so, know about this, RJ. What, what's <laughs> happening? I know you're a big fan of these. Um, of critters? Yeah, no, critters, wildlife, I'm not. crazy stuff. Um, so a Florida woman has posted some videos of what appears to be a frog that died while eating a spider. So uh, these photos what? have of course gone viral and she uh, actually talked with our uh, Mary Claire Patton um, about uh, these photos and she said that yeah that her husband noticed this outside of their house and the, if you look at the pictures they are frightening. So it is a frog <laughs> that's on yes. the side of the house on yes. the wall and it looks like this spider is Somewhat, coming out yeah, of it. Yeah, like half sort of consumed, uh, yeah, halfway in, and it apparently did not make it because this frog is dead. That has been confirmed uh, by this woman here. So, yeah, it is some crazy video or what some crazy freak photos. What thing to see. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. if you want um, more information and to check out these pictures, uh, check us out on KSAT. So weird. Uh, it is really strange. All right, this story right here has gotten a lot of attention. So um, you must, you have already heard about all this Peloton stuff. The, yes. The commercial. Yeah, okay. everyone's, yeah, So a thread arms. started. An NFL reporter started a thread that said he got my, he says, got my wife a Peloton three years ago. She was not offended. Okay, cool. That was the thread. So another reporter, she covers the Cowboys actually, Jane Slater, she tweeted, she said that she once got her ex-boyfriend a Fitbit for Christmas and that they were it was great they loved it and then she realized that uh, there was a spike in his activity at 4 a.m. in oh, the morning. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> yes, um, and um, they were apparently physical levels spiking on the app. And um, yeah, she was saying that uh, he was definitely not enrolled in an Orange Theory class. He just at that wasn't time. getting up real early to work out <laughs> no, like a dedicated I don't think so. guy yeah, would. Yeah, you know, cardio still, right? Is that no, RJ. No, <laughs> this doesn't count. Okay, that how many help steps get you're getting in? Yeah. This does not. <laughs> Count. I think he might have been getting in more than some steps. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's an interesting uh, story. So you can check it out on our website, kz.com. I mean, all these things are they're great and convenient, but yeah, Until, they're watching what you yeah, do. Yeah, definitely. We're all being tracked. <laughs> yeah, you better be careful. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks, RJ. Thank you, Mara. We'll be right back. That is all of our time for tonight. Thanks so much for watching KSAT News at 9. I'm Myra Arthur. Have a great night.